Okay, now we're moving on to TI. TI number one is absent tension. Now this was originally called flat cheeks, and I don't want to use flat cheeks anymore because some TI users have high cheekbones. And this is different from high cheekbones. But, I mean, high cheekbones helps in masking this cue, and also low cheekbones helps confuse it. So it's, it's anatomy, again, gets in the way of this. But all things being equal, so if you had two people with the same cheekbone anatomy, and just one was FI and one was TI, you'd see that the TI one has less toning here. And the less toning there is because FI has a constant micro-pulling, a constant microactivation of the emotive ex the expression of the face whereas TI doesn't have that on by default so as as a result over the years like the tone of the cheeks that especially the, the again the ones that we're talking about here going up here and down here the tone of those cheeks is just gone because they're not constantly on I mean sure I can I can actually activate them like if I try but they're not on all the time and so that, that makes this a looser area. And also, like, there's this kind of triangular area around here that's just generally usually just chill. There's nothing going on necessarily. So TI2 is delicate pinching. Um, this is a little bit misleading because anybody can pinch their fingers. By the way, the delicate pinching refers to this, but there's more nuance to it. Um, this has a margin of error because obviously anybody can pinch and it's a little bit more related to J.I. in general, but it's more specifically a T.I. signal because, uh, so here I'm going to try to demonstrate it, because the T.I. being tied to the linguistic um, expression of F.E. and also being a dispassionate um, essentialist function makes it so that it has to make um, grammatical precise dif uh, differentiations between in information that don't rely on their vibrational sense from, from within so what the, when they're trying to talk TI is trying to create an in itself definition that works kind of um, universally and it's not seeking for how I what is the best way I can say what I feel no it's like what is the best way I can say something in general in a kind of a textbook fashion it's almost as though TI is trying to write a textbook when it's being channeled out of uh, FE and so the the, the fingers withdraw that's really what they're doing like so the, the the wrists of ti kind of t tend to sag and the fingers tend to have a a quality that's has finesse to it and that's actually a shrinking away it's part of how ji has a receding energy the receding energy is a withdrawal from the world so this tentative contact with reality almost like you're almost just flooding away from it is is receding energy so the hands being delicately touching just barely tiptoeing is part of the delicate energy of uh, and a disengagement from the objects that are characteristic of ji but it's a very precise disengagement because ji has um, a diagnostic quality that looks very carefully at uh, micro judgments within the data so so the fingers reflect this. They, they recede, which means they, they bend here and they bend at the fingers, but they also pinch as if trying to grasp. I don't know why, from an evolutionary standpoint, this, is, this happens, but I think the grasping relates to, to the judgment functions in general. So there's a delicate grasping. Basically, that's a J.I. So, so there's this J.I. delicate grasping of like precisely what you want to look for in a, in a kind of narrowed concept. TI3 is emotional neutralization. This is actually uh, a variant of, of JI disengaging eyes. So a disengaging eyes is like this, right? Or And when, when a TI user disengages down, 
the emotion on the face also completely flatlines. So this is about emotional neutralization. So like that. There's just like the mode of expression just falls away for that moment. It might pick up right afterwards, but in that moment, it just kind of it's like, let me think about this. Let me just uh, disconnect from the environment. Let me disconnect also from my own subjectivity to some degree. There are, there are levels to the subjectivity. There's the emotive subjectivity, but then there's the, the introspective aspect, which is still kept. But the, the emotional register is kind of put aside for a moment and things are analyzed kind of from a third person perspective. And that causes the neutralization. So if somebody's emotional expression neutralizes when they're going in, that's TI. The opposite happens with FI. With FI, when they when they use JI, they, they go in to evaluate something using JI, they actually kind of start to bubble up. They start to get really affected. Um, so that's a, a way to distinguish the two. TI4 is stop-start articulation. And what this basically is, is the back and forth that happens between TI and FE due to FE having both of the animated aspects and TI having both of the inanimate aspects. What I mean by this is um, extroversion is given to, to FE and the connection to the emotional register is given to FE uh, and introversion is given to TI and uh, dissociation is given to TI. So it's twofold and twofold. Like with the opposite pairing, uh, TE and FI, TE is dispassionate yet it's proactive. So like the proactivity of TE kind of gives it a little bit more animation. And FI, although it's receding as an introverted function, FI still has animation in the sense of uh, its, its emotional radiation. But that's not true. So what happens with a TI FE user is they, as they oscillate between their, their oscillation pair, they, they go from expressing to flatlining, expressing to flatlining. And there's this, you know, there's this, you see in, in Barack Obama all the time where he just like, he, he pauses and he goes and he pauses, and he goes and he pauses. And they can, and they can be fairly consistent. There doesn't have to be a big gap. Like the pause doesn't have to be long. Like if, if you look at my expression in this video, you'll see that I, I'm constantly doing this, this, this motion. But even, even though the spans between one gesture and the next might only be a, a second or so, but you can, you can see the, the, the go and deflate, go and deflate, go and deflate. And I'll get more into that with the FE section. TI5 is fatigued demeanor. Now, this one doesn't show up very much. It's actually not something that happens unless somebody's a really hardcore TI user. And what this is, is um, this is the kind of lifeless energy that TI can give this person if it's at an extreme. So fatigue demeanor is, is, uh, basically like this and there's almost no effort to talk because um, I'm neutralizing so hard that I talk 10 words per minute because I'm thinking about things for so long to get that precision that I that that that's as far as I want to go if I if I go any faster I'm going to lose accuracy okay you saw that okay that's that's TI's fatigue demeanor if you do see that it's almost a clear sign that somebody is a TI lead <laughs> TI6 is puppeteer hands so this is a variant of meticulous hands which is a JI signal. So puppeteer hands um, are 
So they can take various forms. But again, going back to, to the way that uh, Ji is an introverted function, so it's, it's receding away energy from the world. It's almost just withdrawing away. It's tiptoeing at it. This is actually a gesticulation sign, so there's some crossover with JE, and what that, what that means is that this usually happens with somebody who has some JE. If you don't have some JE, even if it's not a con fully conscious level, if you don't, don't have some JE, this signal won't pop up because it's kind of a collaborative effort between FE uh, and TI. And what this, is, what this is doing is TI is making FE's gestures meticulous. So it looks like this um, and it can go into pinching and it can go back down and, and there's uh, how should I say usually the fingers stretch out from this area out and they, they clamp at the at the tips are here but the forms they can take can be very varied but the fingers always look delicate and I need to parse this out in contrast to um, FI uh, this isn't on the on the code, but in general, we've seen that with with FI users, the kind of meticulousness that they have looks more like uh, like claw like hands. So usually the wrists are a little bit more stiff, but the fingers do more of a this motion. So um, like these are the kind of hands that an FI user might have. They're more um, I don't know bear like, the, the, and if they if they do bend at the wrist. They don't. They don't do this. So this. These are more like TI hands, right? Like these spidery TI hands. Um, some of this can be an FI, but mostly it's they're kept at more grasping and, and internal structure, even if the wrists are bent. It's a subtle difference, but I I think so far it's been pretty consistent. TI seven is technical glitching, and what this basically is is that meticulous quality of speech that I mentioned but um, with I don't want to say a stutter but th there's kind of a you see Obama do this a lot you know he's actually called a stutter uh, where the, the technical gl glitching actually causes a glitching of the language because the effort is to try to get every word out precisely and there's an error level that TI notices as the words that don't fit all the variables of, of the situation. So precision, a perfection is what TI is going for. Perfection in framing and formulation of data and according to their personal aesthetic, uh, symmetric sense of consistency, whatever that is, personal to them, even though they want it to be universal. But if they don't sense that, they kind of backtrack or they, they error correct. They, so there's a lot of dis, you know overlap with disclaimers, but also uh, literally just pausing and stuttering that, that happens with the speech and that, you know, that sort of pausing like, and, and wanting to get just the right words out at the right time. TI-8 is PE momentum clamping. So if uh, TI-6 puppeteer hands was a show of how TI affects FE's gesticulations by making them meticulous, then this signal is about how TI transforms PE um, when PE is trying to go too fast. Usually you see this most clearly in PE leads who are trying to use uh, their auxiliary TI. But you can also see this in, in TI leads that are conscious in PE. So this is a revisor signal. And what it is is like, there's a, PE wants to go, just kind of go, go, go. And, and but, P, uh, but TI won't, uh, <laughs> won't let it go that fast because it's making errors as it goes that fast. So it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, slow down, kind of like pulling the horse back. And that pulling the horse back is, is where you see TI uh, clamping the momentum of PE. And actually you just saw it, uh, I, I did some of this even in giving the signal out.
legitimately because I was being too um, too expedient with my uh, metaphors and I could see that I was losing precision as as things were happening so I'll, T.I. says, give me back that precision, let me, let me slow you down, give me that extra quarter of a second to put that together before I spew nonsense. And that quarter of a second is valuable time for T.I. to make several processing loops and then give out the right output. So T.I. 9 is passive FE articulation. And basically what this is, is um, the quality of the voice of TI when it has the warmth of FE but it lacks the impact of FE. Um, this is not the voice I'm using right now because I'm using a lot of FE in this voice but in, in general um, the TI's uh, passive FE articulation sounds like this um, there's still warmth in it, but there's a, a deflation. So there's a carefulness and there's a level of relaxation, but there's also, it's different than FI's uh, sprite-like voice. It, it's not sprite-like. It's still, you could almost say it's still courteous or at least it's still um, earnest in some way, but it's not, um, it's not trying to be persuasive, but it's not sleeking out emotion like FI either. So it's somewhat of an intermediate voice. You hear this a lot with uh, Noam Chomsky and people like that who have FE conscious, but they are not trying to exaggerate its use. It's a little step up above the fatigue demeanor signal. Sometimes it's used in conjunction. So that this voice has this soft, relaxed quality. Um, it almost fades after every syllable, but uh, it doesn't necessarily vanish all the way. And lastly is TI-10, which is Placid Smiles. And this is a, an adaptive FE signal. And <laughs> so for TI, Placid Smile has to also do with the emotional expression being subordinate or, you know, subject uh, to, to the higher TI. So with TI, you start out with a neutralized face because the there's a disconnect from the emotional register, so the face is more or less always at some level stoic, dispassionate. And the emotive expression has to overcome that dispassion. And sometimes it, it doesn't fully do it, so it, it rises out from the bottom up, trying to fight against a curtain that's pulling down. So there's two, two dynamics going on. There's a flattness of the face, and then add, you know, additive. It's it's an additive emotion. It doesn't leak out from within like FI. It's like <laughs> so that's it's placid. It's um, some F some TI users might feel that it's put on as a show, depending on how they feel about their FE. If they're more connected to their FE, they can feel it as an authentic expression, but uh, it can also be used just as a way of moving the social environment into a more pleasing uh, dynamic for them. This is different than just smiling at a courtesy. Uh, it's everybody smiles at a courtesy, uh, FI issues, but with TI you can, it's this again, this is a voltology sign, you can see the, the shape <laughs> It's like it's wider here, and and it, there's a there's a curtain effect to the side, but there's a flatness here. So that's that's what it looks like uh, as a signal, and that's all the TI signals. 